Welcome back to the Chad HD Show. One of the stories that's been playing out across the state of Texas, you've seen headlines, we, we've uh, visited with some folks uh, here on the program, the future of the Alamo. And there is a project of reimagining the Alamo. And joining us on the program today, our next guest, uh, we're going to spend the next two days uh, talking about the Alamo uh, tomorrow on the show, we'll visit with someone from the uh, uh, Texas General Land Office. Uh, and, and today, we actually get to visit with the CEO of the Alamo, which that's a pretty cool job title. Uh, Doug McDonald joining us here on the Chad Hasty Show. Uh, Mr. McDonald, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Pleasure to be with you. Well, so, okay, that that's a pretty cool title, CEO of the Alamo. You know, I've been in the history field my whole career, and um, I started – working in a museum that, that told the story of 1836 and in central Indiana. And we, in every fall, we would talk about there was this amazing event that had happened in the spring in, in Texas. And so here I am at the, you know, 30 years later in my career, and I'm at that venue that we talked about at the beginning of my museum career. It's a pretty cool job. It's an amazing, powerful, powerful story. That's awesome. Uh, we, we we had a uh, a gentleman on uh, about a week or two ago uh b- because there's this there's this debate raging around the Alamo and what the future of the Alamo is going to look like and and tomorrow on the show I'm going to have on someone from uh, the land office and and you know they're I, I think they're kind of be you know doing all the behind the scenes stuff on this um, the Alamo is going to be impacted one way or the other there's there it looks like there are going to be some changes made at the Alamo. Uh, I want you to tell us what the process is looking like and what needs to be done at the Alamo. Well, let me say first, Chad, thank you for having me on because I think clarity about what we're really doing is important. If if half the statements uh, that were made on the prior show were true, I, like every Texan, would be concerned. What I can tell you and, and all of your listeners is uh, those are simply untrue. It's totally bogus. Um, and and what we're doing at the Al- Alamo is um, we are going to um, we're going to tell the correct history of the Alamo. We always have. We always will. Um, based on evidence, based on real history. Uh, we want to reimagine the experience people have here. I probably wouldn't use the term reimagine. Day is taking a life of its own. But, but, but we're not reimagining any history. Um, I don't spend my whole career in museum field and then at this point decide to reimagine history. Um, we do the real history. The experience, however, um, we are here... I walk across every day, soil stained by the blood of Alamo defenders, and it is dishonored daily. And we intend to fix that and change that. We intend to make an honorable space, a dignified space, um, that makes this the place that honors the defenders. And today it simply does not. How so? You, You know, about a month ago, there was a, this is hard to believe, but we've got a police report to show you. There was a couple having sex in Alamo Plaza at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Within a week, there was a man who defecated in the middle of Alamo Plaza, right in front of the church. Okay, Last uh, Sunday night, I'm working in my office, and I hear a bunch of screaming and noise and everything going on outside. And you know what there was? There was um, th- th- they had a zombie parade. People are walking across the battlefield, the soil stained by the blood of defenders, and they're walking across it in a zombie parade, firing up chainsaws without chains on them, but firing up chainsaws, and people are screaming. Um, you know, there's just a thing that went across my desk uh, yesterday that the next month they're going to have a Wookiee walk, okay? I regard all this as as dishonoring the defenders, and our plan is to change that. So so what? how will the plans, as they are right now, and, and as I understand it, nothing is set in stone yet. It, it's still in the planning process. How are the plans as of right now? How would that change everything? It, it changes it primarily because the streets that are presently in place and Alamo Plaza, the section of Alamo Plaza, which is right in front of the Alamo, is conveyed from being city of San Antonio property to state of Texas property. And we then would want to delineate that space in such a manner 
that we can manage the kinds of activities that happen on this, on, in that space. And that space is the battlefield. That's, we want to reclaim that as a dignified space. And today it is a dishonorable space. So one of the one of the things that and it, it was Rick Range who who was on and he had talked about glass walls that were part of the plan then not part of the plan the the part that I saw that w- was glass was going to be on the ground and over what was the pre existing walls correct correct okay so what where are we on on that issue of walls and glass walls or no glass walls well. So nobody liked the glass wall system. So we said, look, we don't have to talk. This, this is all preliminary design. We don't have to talk about that. I you know, personally think that we have to do something so we can actually kind of define the perimeter. So we actually, what, today you don't understand when you're on the battlefield. I, I mean, I think some of the people who probably were in the zombie parade and in the Wookiee walk, they don't understand they're walking across the, the battlefield. And so by taking and doing archaeology and exposing the original footings of the original walls and then putting glass over the top of them, th- then people can look down and they go, oh, that's, that's real stone. That is the real surface. This is a real historic space. Today, people don't understand that this is a real historic space. So it helps us delineate the, the, uh, the boundaries. Uh, one of the other, and, and I guess there was a rally that was held there, the Cenotaph. That is that, and, and when I was visiting with Rick Range on the show, I, it sounded to me as though that's the focal point for him and 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 his group right now. What is the future of of of, of that great structure? Well, that great structure is in need of repair. Okay. And so let's let's start with that. Um, there are there are some of the limestone is actually fractured. There are places that it's failing. There are some places where you know uh, people have shot off the nose of some of the defenders that needs to get repaired. So we want to make the repairs. Okay, that's honoring the defenders. Secondly, the structural steel underneath is not is not going to last another hundred years. So our plan calls to to dismantle it and rebuild the structural frame underneath it. And by rebuilding the structural frame, we'd, we would re- rebuild it in stainless steel. Uh, so it had, you know, literally hundreds of years of life left on the structure of, of, the, of it. We are trying to reclaim the battlefield into the 1836 time period. And so, and the Cenotaph is 1936. So we, there's been no decision on where to relocate the Cenotaph or whatever, but it's going to be in a respectful location. It's going to be a location that people will still see. Um, it's going to be in a place that helps develop the site and tell the story. And so that's the controversial part of the plan, um, you know, to most people. Um, but I think if you think about what is the plan in its entirety, you know, that's a minor part of the plan, and there's plenty of options and no final decisions on that. The Cenotaph's owned by the city, so that it, it is their decision. But we're going to build a new museum. We're going to build the largest exhibit to the Tex- regard- about the Texas Revolution in the world as a part of that. We're going to exhibit the Phil Collins collection, uh, which we do not have space to do that. We're going to actually preserve the Church of Long Barracks, which is, have it, has all kinds of problems uh, that's there, we want to, and we want to make sure they're taken care of. So, so you know, other people who have problems with send yes. But um, is 90% of this plan a good plan? Absolutely. Is there 10% that may not be a good plan? There are some people that feel that way. But let's talk. Let, let's look at the whole plan and not cherry pick one little aspect of it. Where can people? Is, is there a, a site that people can go to where, where they can keep up with this and they can see the plan themselves? Yep. Go to the Alamo.org uh, slash Alamo Master Plan. You know, one of the other things that, that, that has been brought up, and I've seen it in other interviews, and I think it was said in, in our interview, which was that this is a move to uh, make this battle politically correct, which I don't know how you can make a battle politically correct, I, I, you, know, I, you know, unless you hide information. Is there any move at all to make this politically correct or to, to say that somehow the, you know, the, that uh, the Alamo was a bad thing? Dr. Bruce Winters, who's been on our staff for 21 years here at the Alamo, in 2010, 
uh, the State House Press published an interview with him asking about political correctness and the Alamo. Dr. Winters said, I believe it's more important to be correct than to be politically correct. The narrative visitors receive at the Alamo is based on evidence. Dr. Winters has a 21-year reputation and lots of published works um, around that. That's what we stand behind. The story you're going to hear here at the Alamo is going to be the story that you read in, in Steve Harden's book. It's going to be the story you, you read in H.W. Uh, Brand's book. It's the story you read in Gene Donovan's book. If you, you know, that's the story you're going to see. This is just another, this is a bogus state, statement that is made by people that, for which there's not one shred of evidence. Doug McDonald, CEO of the Alamo, I appreciate you coming on today. I think it's an important discussion and uh, all sides needs to be heard because uh, the, the Alamo obviously is very important uh, to this state and there's a lot of passion on, on every side. Well, David, David Crockett told us to be sure and then go forward. I wish people would be sure about the facts and what the real information is, and then let's go forward and do something. Doug, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, that's Doug McDonald, CEO of the Alamo. Chad Hasty Show, KFYO.